What's going on guys, Austin Zayback here with another video and in this video I'm gonna show you how you can value your house, okay? How you can value your property or a property you're looking to buy or a house you're looking to buy in 2022. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm actually a real estate investor but I'm also a homeowner. So if you're watching the video and you're a real estate investor, then great. If you're a homeowner, then that is also very good and I definitely want you to stay to the end of the video because we all know how inaccurate all all of the online platforms are, right? All the online websites such as Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, you know, we've all heard the horror stories of going on Zillow and our house is way off. Like this estimate is way off, either in a good way, but sometimes in a bad way. The reality of it is sometimes we just wanna know what our home is worth. And obviously we are in a crazy, crazy market, right? Where everybody's home. If you own a home right now, your home is probably worth significantly more than it was just a couple of years ago. And I can basically say that with complete confidence because there's no supply, the demand is really high, and it's just a crazy market that we're in, right? However, the market is definitely changing, okay? So if you're watching the video right now, make sure you stay to the very end because we're gonna talk a little bit about that also and what you can kind of expect to see, right? But what I want you to do is know how to value your home. Knowing the accurate value of your home is extremely important, I believe, because I believe it allows Allows you to make good financial decisions like should you keep it should you sell it should you rent it should you buy another one you know what in the world kind of decision should you make but how can you make a decision if you can't actually know the true value of your home so interest rates are obviously going up uh, supply depending on where you live is actually still really low demand is still pretty high but the market's definitely shifting a little bit we've seen a ton of inflation we've definitely seen real estate prices go through the moon over the last couple of years so congratulations if you own a home good for you give yourself a pat on the back because basically as long as you bought it I don't know in the last couple of years you've definitely made money pretty much doing nothing okay but let's just go ahead and jump right into how to actually find the value of a house so you know what I want you to remember is that Zillow okay everybody knows about Zillow right if you're watching the video you definitely have heard of Zillow the reality of Zillow is that the estimate is an algorithm right and what we want to understand about an algorithm is that it's wrong a lot of the time okay um, you know and, and what I can say that with certainty because the reality of it also is is that Zillow actually lost a lot of money with their home buying program, right? So if you look, there's actually been reports, there's been articles that have come out. You know, Zillow used to buy homes, right? We've actually sold homes to Zillow, but they lost a ton of money and they stopped buying homes. Now, I'm not going to say that, you know, they bought everything based on an algorithm, the algorithm was wrong and they lost a bunch of money, you know, who knows? There's probably a ton of variables to it and I'm not entirely sure, but what I can tell you for sure is that you shouldn't rely on an algorithm to know the value of your property. So I'm gonna break down right over here what I mean by that, okay? So I'm just taking a random subject property here and I'm gonna actually show you what I'm talking about. So right here, it actually says that the estimate is $314,800, okay? Um, but how do we know that's accurate? Like, where did they come up with that number? And I think that unfortunately, a lot of people today, you know, they just rely on that, right? And they don't really think about it. Um, you know, maybe you call your real estate agent, maybe you rely on what your real estate agent says, but what if they're wrong, right? What if this estimate's wrong and your real estate agent's wrong, right? I mean, who actually knows? And I think it's important that if you're a real estate investor, right, or you're a homeowner, that you can determine the value of your home. So if somebody tells you the value and it doesn't align with what you think the actual value is based on your actual research, then you can be like, hey, I don't agree with that. Okay, so when you actually Google how to determine the value of a home, if you don't already know, you know, it's very simple, but what you have to understand is the number one thing that'll determine the value of a home, and Open Door actually released this article right here, uh, but it's actually very true, right? The number one thing is the neighborhood comps. Now, what a comp is, is it is a comparable property. And we're gonna talk in just a minute what that actually means. Like when you say the word comparable, what are we actually talking about here? Because I actually think that a lot of people, even real estate investors, don't understand the true meaning of the word comparable, okay? Um, the other thing is location, home size, and usable space. 
age and condition, upgrades and updates. That is a huge one. We're gonna come back to that in just a minute. The local market, okay, we talked about in the beginning of the video how crazy the market is right now. Also, economic factors and indicators and also interest rates, which we talked about that a little while ago also, okay? So we wanna understand how then is Zillow determining the Zestimate, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to Zillow and we're gonna scroll down here where it actually says comparable homes. Remember, that was the first thing that we talked about that we said was the most important thing. Now remember, a comparable home is a home that is similar, okay? Similar to your home, right? Similar to the home you're looking to buy, you're looking to sell, maybe you own it as a rental, you're looking to buy as an investment property, right? So it has to be similar. Now, the way that I determine similar is that it is similar in bedrooms, bathrooms, it is in the same, ideally in the same subdivision, okay? Also, it has to be similar in age, it has to be similar in the sense of, you know, pool or no pool, right? If one property has power lines going through the front yard and the other property does not, that is not similar, right? They have to be similar. If one is on a main road and the other one is not on a main road, right? These are things that will completely throw off, you know, a comparable property because it is no longer comparable, okay? So we have to understand all of the factors that go into this. Now, Zillow, based on their algorithm, is showing me what they believe to be six homes, okay? Right here, you can actually see one, two, okay? Three, four, five, six homes in the same vicinity of the subject property we're looking at on 316 North 84th Place in Mesa, Arizona, okay? And they're basically looking at sold comps, okay? Um, and essentially coming up with what they believe to be these estimate, okay? Based on the algorithm. But what we need to understand is we need to know what is the condition of our home, right? And is it actually similar to these six properties that Zillow is showing us? Now, one thing I can say for sure is that Zillow can't possibly know the condition. I mean, think about it for a minute, right? Can Zillow actually know the condition of your property where you live right now? Can Zillow know the condition of a property you're about to buy? Can Zillow know a condition of a property that you're gonna invest in, right? I don't think they can actually know the condition, okay? So that is a big red flag to me, right? If they can't possibly know the interior condition of a property, then how can they give you an estimate of its value, right? Because if it's fully renovated, right, and totally up to date, there's gonna be a big discrepancy of its value compared to if it's completely outdated, right? And I talk to people all the time where they have a property that's totally outdated, but it's livable, right? It's actually a very clean property. They kept it well, very well over the years. They did all the necessary upkeep and work, but the property is totally outdated, right? Maybe they have Formica countertops. Maybe they have the old, you know, cabinets. Maybe they have an old green stove. I went through a property the other day. They had a green stove in the kitchen, okay? Like literally an antique, right? So Zillow doesn't know about that, right? And you have to understand that a property that's totally outdated, although it is livable and very clean, does not mean that it will sell for the same price that a fully renovated, newer uh, renovated property will sell for. So as I go and look at this, what I would do hypothetically, and you can definitely do this on your own because I wanna show you a few more things in the video and I don't want it to take forever, but I would actually hypothetically go into each one of these properties, these sold properties, and I would individually look at them. And I would figure out which one of these properties is most like the property that I am trying to compare it to, right? And so if my subject property is fully renovated, you know, top of the line everything, then I wanna find a property that is in a similar condition, similar bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, you know, in the same subdivision, the whole nine, right? So let's just assume for a minute that this subject property for the sake of the video was fully renovated and in amazing shape, right? It looks to me like this property right here on 333 North 85th place is probably going to be the one that would be the most similar, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and then I'm gonna look at it, right? And I'm gonna actually look at pictures, okay? Pictures will tell you almost everything you need to know every single time about finding the value of a home, right? Does it actually look like my property? Is it a similar floor plan? 
is it a similar layout, right? Is it similar in all of the ways that a property could be similar? In an ideal world, what you would do is you would find multiple properties that are the most similar to the property that you have or you're looking to get or invest in, and you'll take the average of those properties, right? Or if you're conservative, you'll take the bottom end, and if you're aggressive, you'll kind of look at the top end, right? And that is how you'll determine the value of a property. Now, that is obviously Zillow, okay? So, you know, this property right here sold for 401,000, or it closed, sorry, for $400,000, okay? We can see that actually right here, okay? It closed for 400,000. They estimated at 401.6 based on the algorithm, right? Um, but that is a pretty good comp, right? I, I would say that our property, when we looked at our property a minute ago, is actually assuming it was fully updated, fully renovated, is very similar, right? Similar in bedrooms, similar in bathrooms, square footage. It actually looks similar. So again, that is how you determine on Zillow. Now, if you're a real estate agent, okay, or you know a real estate agent, right? You know a realtor, then you can use what they call the tax records or the AR, the MLS essentially, right? The multiple listing service. Depending on where you live, there should be a way to comp properties within the MLS. So in Arizona, they call it Monsoon, and that's what we're looking at here, right? Now, Monsoon is a branch off of the MLS, which is the multiple listing service, which a real estate agent has access to. Now, this will just give you, you know, basically the same data, but you know, it's always good to cross-reference it, and sometimes this can be a little bit more accurate because it is what real estate agents use. And I can see everything, right? I can see what they paid for this home. I can see if they have a mortgage on the property. I can really see everything I need to know about the property, right? And I can actually start to click around. So right here, I can say, okay, I wanna see everything that sold within the last one year, right? And I can start to click around in this general area and I can see everything that's sold. And I could go into each individual listing and see how similar is it, right? So this one sold in December for 310,000, similar in square footage, right? And I can click on it here and I can actually figure out, okay, it's a three bedroom, one bathroom, right? Well, ours is a two bedroom or whatever it is. And I can start to determine what the value actually is. Here's one for 400, right? Same one we looked at on Zillow. Okay, great. Now we're making a little bit of progress, right? And I can continue to click around and really figure out what the value is of the property based on similar properties, okay? Now, uh, if you have access to the MLS, there'll typically be a comp button, okay? Again, comparable properties. Now, I can actually adjust my criteria to show me exactly what I'm looking for, right? And this is another way to do it, right? So I can come in here and I can say, okay, I wanna find properties that are located within a quarter of a mile that sold in the last maybe six months, right? Um, I don't care about lot square footage or I don't care about you know the, the number of stories, right? But again, the, the more specific you can be with this, the better, right? So um, sold in the last 12 months, plus or minus 15 square feet, same number of stories, located within a quarter of a mile, here's all the properties that the uh, MLS is finding. Now, what I can tell you right out of the gate is number five and number six are probably in a different subdivision because they're above the main road, right? Anytime you pass over a main road, you typically enter a different subdivision, which at one point was a different builder, which means the properties probably aren't very similar. So I can go ahead and look here, and this will actually give me kind of a quick report, kind of like I was telling you a little while ago, depending on if you're conservative or if you're aggressive, right? So this says, hey, the high end is about 400 grand, right? Which is what we were looking at, right? So if it's fully renovated, completely similar to that one that was nice and updated, you know, 400 grand's probably on the high end, right? On the low end, like 144 grand. Like it needs a lot of work, right? It needs a ton of work. And you know, here's like kind of an average and here's median, okay? And you can determine it that way. Now, that is obviously how you do it with the MLS, okay? And again, there's a lot of different ways depending on your MLS or your realtor's MLS. You know, you can pull different reports. You can get really creative with this. And I encourage you to do a deep dive, you know, before making a decision 
on what it is that you're gonna do. Now, one more that I wanna show you is actually called PropStream, okay? Now, if you're not familiar with PropStream, if you're a real estate investor, you might be. If you're a homeowner, you might not be. Um, I actually really like this software a lot. It's really good for real estate investors. Um, I actually have a discount code. If you are interested, no pressure at all, I'll leave the link down below. I'll put it on the screen also. It's www.topredata.com. Um, that'll get you a discount. It's actually really inexpensive for all the things that you can do with it, right? And I'm not gonna get too much into that today. Um, I can definitely do another video, but you can do a lot of stuff with this software. Like It is absolutely insane. It'll actually show me all the cash buyers, It'll show me bank owned properties. It'll show me vacant properties, properties with high equity. I can look at, I can like pretty much do everything in this software, which is really cool because data is everything, right? If I have good data, then, you know, I can literally reach out to a cash buyer and there's my buyer, right? Or whatever the case is. But I'll keep it simple for the video. And we're just going to go ahead and jump into the property and we're going to look at what PropStream actually says. So as you can tell, this estimate was somewhere around 300 grand. PropStream is saying 263,000. I said that, hey, if it was fully updated, it would be around 400 grand, but it's obviously not fully updated, right? So as you can tell, there, all of these different softwares, if you just let the algorithm take care of it for you, it is not gonna be a good judge of what the value is of a property, no matter what software, even PropStream, which I absolutely love PropStream, and I love the MLS, okay? I'm not a huge fan of Zillow, but you can definitely use Zillow, and Zillow will work if you just don't look at this estimate and base your entire decision based on that. So I can go ahead and I can actually come in here and I can look at comparable and nearby listings. Um, it's gonna show me all the cash buyers in the area. It's gonna show me all the pre foreclosures in the area. Um, anybody that has flipped a property in the area, you know, they bought it in cash, they sold it in a short period of time and made a certain amount of profit, they'll consider that a flip. Um, I can look at pretty much everything in here. Um, you know, obviously our comparables, bankruptcy, divorce even, right, vacant. So again, if you're a real estate investor, this is really, really cool. If you're a homeowner, I still think it's really cool. Um, but you know, totally your call obviously on your budget and everything like that, okay? But again, you know, I'm actually gonna wanna come in here and look at every property, figure out what is the most comparable, what's different, what's similar, you know, based on the condition of my property and making sure that it's truly a comparable. And I think that really summarizes the entire video, right? Is when we're trying to determine the value of a property, the, the number one thing you have to remember is, is it truly comparable? The properties that sold in the last six months or 12 months, are they truly comparable to the property I'm trying to determine the value of, right? The last thing I'll leave you with is you cannot determine a property's value based on a property that has not sold. I see a lot of people that say, my neighbor just listed their home for a million dollars. It's like, I can list my property for a billion dollars. It does not mean that it will sell, okay? So you have to remember that. You have to base your decision off properties that have actually sold, not properties that are active or maybe went off the market temporarily. Maybe the listing got canceled or whatever it might be. The properties have to be sold, it has to be sold recently, and they have to be comparable. That is the most important thing. And if you do everything manually, if I come in here manually and I actually look at each individual property that I'm trying to compare it to, and I make a spreadsheet or write it down on a notepad or whatever and do it manually, that number will always be, in my opinion, way more accurate than any algorithm can ever be because you know the true condition of that property and you can see pictures of the properties that you're comparing them to and you can know for certain that you have an accurate or fairly accurate number of what it is that your property is worth. So I really appreciate you for watching the video. If you made it to the very end, please do me a huge favor. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would appreciate it if you did that. And uh, I'll definitely make more videos just like it. So if you have any video ideas or anything you want me to do, drop in the comments section down below. Let me know what you'd like me to do. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.